Welcome to another episode of Jeff Smith's Garage. This time I thought we'd talk about stainless valves. We've got some stuff here for a small block Chevy. Urson sent us some nice stainless valves. I thought we'd clue you in on the technology. Let's talk about materials first. So in a production valve, uh, they're just steel, they're, uh, whereas the, the Ursins are an EV8 stainless. Um, the problem with steel, stock steel valves is as you tend to generate more heat from, let's say, higher compression, pushing the motor harder, stuff like that, uh, drag racing or road racing application, what happens is as the temperature EGTs go up, exhaust gas temperatures go up, the, the valve actually starts to lose strength, whereas a steel, stainless steel valve it actually can handle it much better and it actually maintains its strength or actually gets stronger. So um, these are actually EV8 stainless and uh, then <clears throat> as far as the stems are concerned, these are hard chromed because you really can't harden stainless valves conveniently or easily. So they hard chrome these and then the, the tips are actually stellite. So if you want to step up into a much more high performance valve, you get into high-end turbocharging, supercharging, you get into an end canal, something like that, those things are ridiculously expensive. Uh, and really for competition engine applications, the same thing with titanium. Titanium is actually kind of soft, so you have to run some kind of a lash, ta lash cap. So uh, these valves are really the ideal choice for a street engine and even mild competition stuff because it can handle the temperature. So we can get into more specifics now with the, uh, with the, with the Urson valves. They actually offer two different series. They have a 1000 series, which is the competition series. Uh, and that's the high end. And then, and then for like a street application where the kind of stuff we're doing, uh, they offer a sportsman valve that's a little bit less expensive. The, the advantage to the, uh, a lot of the features are the same between the two. The advantage to the competition series is they can be as much as 10% lighter which when you're pulling 30 G's on an acceleration rate on a, on a mechanical roller camshaft at 6,500, 7,500 RPM, that's a big deal. That's definitely worthwhile. So, um, but for your typical street guy, uh, the, the, uh, the sportsman valve is really the hot ticket because it's, it's an affordable way to get into a good high performance valve. And then some of the other features, um, they, 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 they reduce the stem diameter down here, which is worth perhaps as much as a 10% increase in airflow. Um, and again, those, they're hard, hard chromed. And then the, 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 uh, the lock is a square cut lock. Now, one of the things you have to be careful of is you want to make sure and find keepers or locks that fit a square cut as opposed to some of some other valves by other companies. They, they cut a, a round, half round groove in it. And you just don't want to mix the locks. You just have to make sure and catch the right one. And of course, locks are defined by the stem diameter of the valve. In this particular case, these are uh, 202, 160 valves for a little iron small block 492 head that we've got for like, a, like an LT1 Camaro, 1970, 71 LT1 Camaro. And uh, we were just looking for some nice affordable valves. We thought this was the hot ticket. So the majority of these Urson valves are aimed at small and big block Chevys, but they do offer some other varieties of stuff. The overall lengths are quite substantial. In terms of diameter, we go from 194 to 2350, those 2.35 inches. And then on the, that's on the intake side. On the exhaust, it's one and a half, 1500 to 1850. So, um, but there are also some other features that you might want to be concerned with. One of the things they'll ask you is tip length. Well, the tip length is from the lock groove upwards. And the reason that's important is because uh, in the late 80s, Chevy went from a standard rocker arm, which is this design, uh, stamped rocker or a roller, either one, it's just got a flat tip on it here where it just runs across. But then later, and that's used in, in conjunction with a uh, pushrod guide plate to center the rocker arm on the valve tip. In the late 80s, Chevrolet went to a guided rocker arm, which has these two little nubs on it, and it, and it guides itself on the valve tip so that you don't need a, a uh, pushrod guide plate. So, but with a guided rocker, you need a taller tip length so that it accommodates that height because what you don't want the rocker to do is to touch the retainer 
and unload the lock. That would be bad. So tip length is kind of important, so it's something that you just have to pay attention to. Uh, so we've got valve diameters, we've got tip length, and we've got overall length. Overall length is important because if you want to go, let's say, a hundred thousandths longer, then that gives you more length to to not crash into the seal on, let's say, a 6650 lift cam, something like that. So you got to pay attention to all those details, but when you do, it really works out well. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about earth and stainless valves in this, our little short video and, um, and some application ideas and things like that. It's, it's always important to know the details, that way you don't make a mistake. So if you like what we're doing here at Just Miss Garage, ring the bell, subscribe, and we'll keep cranking these out for you.